Yeah, so I wanted to walk you through uh, one of the most confusing reports, maybe aside from the cohort report, to existing Google Analytics. Um, and that's purely because they don't do a good job of, you know, adding tooltips. And um, I was thinking about this earlier, and I, I feel like some amazing UX designer designed this, and he's way smarter than I am. But being a dumb marketer that I am, uh, this confuses me, so I want to walk you through it. Uh, and I really hope you find this useful. So ask me questions in the comments if you do not, or if you find it incredibly useful, let me know. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at the default date range under conversions and checkout behavior under shopping analysis and e-commerce. E you have to have e-commerce enabled, and I believe you have to have enhanced e-commerce enabled, which most of you probably do, um, as e-commerce company owners or marketers. Um, and I wanna walk you through just the most important part because it gets super confusing after a while. Um, essentially, it's just like percentages of drop-offs and percentages of follow-throughs and just ignore like everything underneath here. It's just dumb. It doesn't make any sense. And you can look at the, the blue marks and that's great. Awesome. Um, but essentially, this is like a standard card model. And if you flipped this on its side, this whole box, you'd essentially see your marketing funnel, right? So this blue mark down over here would be on the bottom. This is the number of people who checked out. Um, and you can see like sessions with transactions. So um, that's a very technical e-commerce term, like sessions with transactions. Um, if you're unsure what a session is, go and watch my other video, which is what are sessions in Google Analytics? Um, that'll walk you through it. But essentially, these are people who have reached your thank you page, uh, who have sent you the credit card info, you've processed the payment, all of that good stuff. Um, this, is, this is the number of people. Then essentially what you're looking at, if you're going backwards, again, thinking of the funnel as you're going up the funnel, into your cart. So this is where you review your purchase details, review your billing details and all that good stuff. Um, this is what that looks like. This is where you, um, as a user, as a customer, you enter payment um, into that, uh, that card process or that checkout process. Uh, and then this is where you enter your billing and shipping information, which is the step before. So if we're looking at pages, this would be the thank you page. Hey, thank you for shopping with us if you're Amazon. This would be review your order before you click purchase. This would be entering your payment information, and this would be entering your billing and shipping information. These would be four separate pages in most cases. If you're a little, I don't want to say advanced, but if you have this set up, it could be virtual page views. Um, there are a lot of reasons why this wouldn't be the case if you're using like PHP or Ajax or something like that. Um, it could be different. But this is the four-step process of people checking out. Uh, what I want you to look at are, are these numbers up here, because essentially this means that uh, there have been 2,201 um, individual sessions with the transaction. Now, your average order size might be, uh, you know, more, like might reflect more than one product. Um, you might have three to four purchases per um, actual transaction, so three to four things are sold. This just means that somebody came to your site and they could have added one item to their cart and purchased, or they could have added 100 items to their cart and purchased. This is basically the number of people or the number of individual transactions that occurred. Um, now the step before that, um, if we're working backward, uh, there's a reason why it's increasing over time is because 100% of people are not gonna actually buy. There are lots of reasons why they might just close their laptop, they might get a phone call, they're trying to check out on their phone, whatever reason, if you can close 100% of people, I want to come work for you. So stop watching this video and just call me, like, let me know, I will come work for you. Um, there's always going to be a drop off. And actually in this demo account, which is the Google Analytics demo account, which you can get for free, um, this is not a likely path. Like 64% of people are not likely to check out uh, that enter into the car process. Um, again, call me if, it, if they do, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, so what we're looking at is basically like the the funnel right here. Um, and what you're gonna view is basically like you want to, as a marketer, you want to decrease the number of people that drop off in between each period. So if you're trying to interpret this report, honestly, I would just export it or look at it in this simple view uh, and ignore everything else down here because it really is clutter if you're looking for the basics and just focus on the drop off here. And what you can do is you can compare over time to previous periods, like how do things happen? Um, 
And what I would do is just look at the raw numbers, you know. It looks like less people are getting to the cart and less people are checking out, but is that percentage different or is it the same? And those are the things I'd look for. So I hope that was helpful. There's a ton more in the simple report. It's just one report, um, but I don't want you to get too bogged down because when you, you know, look at this report, it ends up being a can of worms down here. Um, and it does make sense uh, if you dug in before, but simply look at this as the conversion funnel for your company. Thanks. Let me know if that was helpful in the comments. Uh, and I'll be back with more Google Analytics and Tag Manager videos.